In this video, we will learn the most basic and important concepts associated with security in general. When you deal with any security implementation, then you will encounter these concepts again and again. The two terms we will be discussing today, most probably you have already heard about them. These are authentication and authorization. In addition to understanding these two, we will also need to understand the main difference between them. Now let's continue with our example that we have used in the previous video where we have talked about a bank and a security guard. Now here Spring Security is the guard and Bank Vault is your web application. So all the requests from user who want to access your resources in your application must go through the Spring Security. Now as discussed earlier, Spring Security will ask a standard set of questions to perform some checks and validations like starting with who are you. In this you are trying to access some resource from the application and before that you must tell Spring Security who are you. In addition to that you also must prove it that it is you. That proof you can provide some kind of ID or something that only you can provide. Once that validation is done, then the next question or the validation check will be to see what do you want. In this, you will tell Spring Security that you want to access, let's say, XYZ resource. In this step, you do not have to provide any ID proof. So in this, answering the first question, which was who are you, is known as authentication. Most of the web applications will have username and details, which represents you in the application. So when you access the web application, you have to provide what is your username. After telling your username, you also must prove that that particular username or account belongs to you. The most common way to prove that it is your account is by providing a password associated to your username. That password you may have set during the registration. This is how we generally log into the application such as Facebook or Gmail as well. This type of authentication is known as knowledge based authentication because it is based on some sort of knowledge that you have. That particular knowledge can be a password, it can be a pin or it can be an answer to a secret question that only you knows. Now let's see some of the advantages and disadvantages of using knowledge based authentication. One of the biggest advantage of using knowledge based authentication is its simplicity. It is very easy to implement. However, it does come with a drawback too. Suppose someone steals your password or came to know what your password is, then they can pretend as you and access your account in the web application. Because passwords can be easily guessed and they are mostly based on some information related to you, which someone else might also know. For example, many times people set date of birth as their password or easy to guess passwords like number sequence or letter sequence. Also, they can be cracked using some brute force attacks as well. Brute force attack is nothing but where attacker keeps on trying with the different combinations and succeeded eventually. There are other authentication mechanisms like possession based authentication. Now suppose before you log in, the web application sends you an OTP on the mobile which is supposed to be in your possession. And as we know, stealing a mobile phone is more difficult than stealing a password. So after these two steps only, the application will let you in and let you perform the operations. The other examples of possession based authentications can be key cards. Key cards is which can be used to swipe to access or you can have safe words which acts as an access token device which generates the access token on the go from dedicated devices. These items are supposed to be in your possession. So that is why it is known as possession based authentication. Some applications make use of both the knowledge based and possession based authentication together which is also known as multi-factor authentication. Because we are using multiple authentication mechanisms to establish user identity. In this most of the time the authentication process will start with username and password and once that is verified then possession based authentication is triggered. In that an OTP can be sent to your registered device. So if you have opted for OTP based authentication and once both the authentications are successful, only then the web application will allow you to proceed further. Now to sum up what is authentication? It is the answer to the question who are you along with the proof that you are actually who you say you are. Now let's move to authorization. 
So if you remember in the beginning after asking who are you when the security guard or spring security is checking what do you want and based on that then deciding if you are allowed to access that requested resource or not. Answer to that particular question will be in the form of yes or no. In this case no password or credentials will be required. In other words it is answering the question that can this user do what they are trying to do. Any system can have multiple operations which user can perform and some user might be able to do one particular operation and may not be able to do other operations. To make you understand this better way, let me give you an example. Consider a shopping supermarket application and everyone who works in the supermarket can log into the application and use it. They can authenticate with their user ID and password. But once they have authenticated, what each person can do with the application really depends on who that particular user is. For example, a clerk can probably access the billing functionality or check if something is in stock and a department manager can probably see how his or her department is doing and the store manager can see everything across the store in all his departments. So every time anybody access anything in the application, the Spring Security is doing this decision. Should this user be allowed to do this operation or not? Because all the requests are going through Spring Security. It also has mechanism to block the user doing some operation that they are actually not allowed to do. The decision depends on who the user is and what they are trying to do. Like a clerk cannot access the department reports as he or she will not have access to do the same. This process of deciding whether a user can access a specific resource based on their role is known as authorization. So in a way for authorization you need authentication first. You need to know who the user is first before you can decide what that particular user can or cannot do in the application. I hope with this the concepts of authentication and authorization are clear. Please let me know in the comment section and if you found this content useful don't forget to leave a like. This will motivate me to create better content every time. We will cover the remaining core concepts which are principle, granted authority and roles in the next video. Till then, thank you so much for watching. Keep learning.